Hi, how are you? I'm going to read you a story today. Um, the name of it is Toodle. It's about a little train. This is a little golden book. Okay. This is Toodle. It says the story is by Gertrude Crampton and the pictures are by Tibua Gurgley. Okay. All right. Far, far to the west of everywhere is the village of Lower Trainswitch. All the baby locomotives go to there to learn to be big locomotives. The young locomotives steam up and down the tracks, trying to call out the long, sad toot of the big locomotives. But the best they can do is a happy little Lower Train Switch has a fine school for engines. There are lessons in whistle blowing, stopping for a red flag, waving, puffing loudly when starting, coming around curves safely, screeching when stopping, and clicking and clacking over the rails. Mm -hmm. Little things. Let's see. This is. This is Staying on the rails no matter what. There's all the little trains in it. it. says, of all the things that are taught in the lower train which school for locomotives, the most important is, of course, staying on the rails no matter what. It says that. Mm -hmm. oh, they're all learning very hard. Okay. The head of the school is an old engineer named Bill. Bill, oops. Bill always tells the new locomotives that he will not be angry if they sometimes spill the soup pulling the diner, or if they turn the milk to butter now and then. But they will never ever be good trains unless they get a 100 A plus in staying on the tracks. And rails no matter what. All the baby engines work very hard to get 100 A plus in staying on the rails. After a few weeks not one of the engines in the lower train switch school for trains would even think of getting off the rails no matter well no matter what. I'm not trying to be big big trains. Here we go. One day, a new locomotive named Toodle came to the school. Here's the finest baby I've seen since old 600, thought Bill. He patted the gleaming young locomotive and said, How would you like to grow up to be the flyer between New York and Chicago? If a flyer goes very fast, I should like to be one, Toodle answered. I love to go fast. Watch me. See where they all live? He raced all around the roundhouse. Good, good, said Bill. You must study whistleblowing, puffing loudly when starting, stopping for a red flag, waving, pulling the diner without spilling the soup. So he's racing all around. And Bill right here is like, good, good job. Okay. All right. But most of all, you must study staying on the rails no matter what. Remember, you can't be a flyer unless you get a 100 A plus in staying on the rails. Toodle promised that he would remember and that he would work very hard. He did too. He even worked hard at stopping for red flag waving. Toodle did not like those lessons at all. There is nothing a locomotive hates more than stopping. He wants to go but Bill said that no locomotive ever, ever kept going when he saw a red flag waving. One day, while Toodle was practicing for his lesson in staying on the rails no matter what, a dreadful thing happened. He looked across the meadow he was running through and saw a fine, strong, black horse. 
race you to the river, shouted the black horse, and kicked up his heels. Away went the horse. His black tail streamed out behind him and his mane tossed in the wind. Oh, how he could run. Is the horse there? It's fast. Mm -hmm. Here I go, said Toodle to himself. I am going to be a flyer. I can't let a horse beat me, he puffed. Everyone at school will laugh at me. His wheels turned so fast that they were as silver streaks. The cars lurched and bumped together, and just as Toodle was sure he could win, the tracks made a great curve. Oh, whistle, cried Toodle. That horse will beat me now. He'll run straight while I take the great curve. Then... The dreadful thing happened. After all that Bill had said about staying on the rails no matter what, Toodle jumped off the tracks and raced alongside the black horse. The race ended in a tie. Both Toodle and the black horse were happy. They stood on the bank of the river and talked. It's nice here in the meadow, Toodle said. When Toodle got back to school, he said nothing about leaving the rails, but he thought about it that night in the roundhouse. Tomorrow I will work hard, decided Toodle. I will not even think of leaving the rails, no matter what. And he did work hard. He practiced tutoring so much that the mayor himself ran up the hill, his green coattails flapping, and he said that everyone in the village had a headache and would he please stop tootling. So Toodle was sent to practice staying on the rails, no matter what. He's going to stay on the rails. It's a train. As he came to the great curve, Toodle looked across the meadow. It was full of buttercups. Picture. There's the great curve right there. You see it's the meadow. Let's move up. All right. It's like a big yellow carpet. How should I like to play in them and hold one under my searchlight to see if I like butter? Thought Toodle. But no, I am going to be a flyer, and I must practice staying on the rails no matter what. Toodle clicked and clacked around the great curve. His wheels began to say over again, Do you like butter? Do you? I don't know, said Toodle crossly, but I'm going to find out. He stopped much faster than any good flyer ever does, unless he is stopping for a red flag waving. He hopped off the track and bumped across the meadow to the yellow buttercups. What fun, said Toodle and he danced around and around and held one of the butter cups under his searchlight. I do like butter, cried Toodle, I do. At last the sun began to go down and it was time to hurry to the roundhouse. Mm -hmm. That evening, while the chief oiler was playing checkers with old Bill, he said it's strange, it's very strange, but I found grass between Toodle's front wheels today. Hmm, said Bill. There must be grass growing on the tracks. Not on our tracks, said the day watchman, who spent his days watching the tracks and his nights watching Bill and the chief oiler play checkers. Bill's face was stern. Toodle knows he must get 100 A plus in staying on the rails, no matter what, if he is going to be a flyer. So, this book, somebody had it before me, and they drew on the pages, which is never a nice thing to do for the book, because then when you read it, so you get messy in your book. So if you have a book, don't color in it. All right, back to the story. Next day, Toodle played all day in the meadow. He watched a green frog, and he made a daisy chain. He found a rain barrel, and he softly toot, toot, shouted the barrel. Why, I should like... I should sound like a flyer already, cried Toodle. It's off the tracks. That night, the first assistant oiler said he had found a daisy in Toodle's bell. The day after that, the second assistant oiler said that he had found a hollyhock flowers floating in Toodle's eight bowls of soup. Where is all this stuff coming from? It's been in the meadow. And then the mayor himself said that he had seen Toodle chasing butterflies in the meadow. The mayor himself said that Toodle had looked very silly, too. Early one morning, Bill had a long, long talk with the mayor himself. 
When the mayor himself left the lower train switch school for locomotives, he laughed all the way to the village. Bill's plan will surely put Tootle back on the track, he chuckled. Bill ran from one store to the next, buying 10 yards of this and 20 yards of that, and all you have of the other. The chief oiler and the first and second and third assistant oilers were hammering and sawing instead of oiling and polishing. And Tootle? Well, Tootle was in the meadow watching the butterflies and wishing he could dip and soar as they did. Not a town in Lower Train Switch was open the next day. And not a person was at home. By the time the sun came up, every villager was hiding in the meadow along the tracks, and each of them had a red flag. It had taken all the red goods in Lower Train Switch and hard work by the oilers, but there was a red flag for everyone. Soon, Tootle came tootling happy down the tracks. When he came to the meadow, he hopped off the tracks and rolled along the grass. Just as he was thinking what a beautiful day it was, a red flag poked up from the grass and waved hard. Tootle stopped, for every locomotive knows he must stop for a red flag waving. I'll go another way, said Tootle. Uh -oh. He turned to the left and up came another waving red flag, this time from the middle of the buttercups. When he went to right, there was another red flag waving. There were red flags waving from the buttercups and the daisies under the trees, near the bluebird's nest, and even one behind the rain barrel. And of course, Tootle had to stop for each one, for a locomotive must always stop for a red flag waving. Red flags, muttered Tootle. This meadow is full of red flags. How can I have any fun? Way well, sad. Whenever I start, I have to stop. Why did I think this meadow was such a fine place? Why don't I ever see a green flag? Just as the tears were ready to slide out of the boiler, Tootle happened to look back over his coal car. On the track stood Bill, and in his hand was a big green flag. Oh, said Tootle. He puffed up to Bill and stopped. This is the place for me, said Tootle. There is nothing but red flags for locomotives that get off their tracks. Hooray, shouted the people of Lower Train Switch and jumped up from their hiding places. Hooray for Tootle the Flyer. Now Tootle is a famous two miles a minute flyer. The young locomotives listened to his advice. Work hard, he tells them. Always remember to stop for a red flag waving, but most of all, stay on the rails, no matter what. Well, I hope you like that little story about Tootle the Train. <laughs>